So we are one third into the Inktober challenge and I thought I would check in with you. I've had a few requests for voiceovers and I've already explained to these people that publishing a video every day requires a lot of editing and Inktober usually falls, well, it does fall at the same time every year, but it's also my busiest time. So I'm trying to keep the editing to a minimum and if I were to do a voiceover for every videos, um, it would be very time consuming. So I will do them once in a while when I feel the need to either explain a piece or talk about a specific topic. But I want to talk about the supplies first. So this book is the same I used last year, which is by Artists Loft that I got at Michael's. And it's a sketchbook. It's not a watercolor book. However, I've decided to use watercolor this year as a base to add my color. And it's not really ideal. However, I do love how the paint gets absorbed really quickly uh, by the paper. And I'm left with these beautiful patches of colors. Colors that have a strong outline. It's all part of the challenge and I think it suits the style that I've decided to use this year which is a little bit more graphic art than uh, last year was more sketchy. As for the paintbrush, it's a watercolor paintbrush by B Black Velvet. It's their silver line and this one in particular is a number 8 round. I've used bigger in the past. Uh, this will probably change, so I encourage you to check out the supplies list that I always add in the description of the video. If you're watching on YouTube, you just have to click on show more and scroll down until you see the supplies list. The pens that I'm using, I have two main ones. Uh, they're both black. This one is a Hexa gel pen, a 0.25 millimeter by Muji. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on Muji.com. This pen is probably my favorite for drawing. Uh, the tip is super fine. It, re it retains its extra fine uh, properties. It's a workhorse. However, the ink is not permanent, so that's something to remember. The other pen that I use a lot is the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen and it has uh, cartridges with India ink. That one is permanent. I'm also going to try and keep the same color scheme throughout the whole challenge. These are colors that are left over from a previous painting and they were left in a dish collecting dust so I figured Inktober would be the perfect way to get rid of that beautiful color. The colors are Cascade Green Quinacridone Coral and Quinacridone Burnt Orange by Daniel Smith. Then I have Jaune Brilliant Number no. 1 by Holbein and Shell Pink by Shin Han. You'll also notice that I have changed the angle at which I'm recording uh, just because the way I hold my pen hides what I'm drawing. So if I were to use my permanent installation, which is overhead, you wouldn't have seen anything. And I've noticed it when I was editing the very first few videos. The camera angle presents a little bit of a challenge, however, because of the way the tripod is positioned. I have to remain very stiff. Um, I can't move my left arm too much and I have to keep the book in the same position so some lines are a little bit wobbly and that's fine. I think it suits the style that I've embraced but it's a little bit more challenging. I have a few reasons for doing a voiceover for this particular video. Uh, the first one being that I have things to say about the project itself but also about Inktober in particular. As I've mentioned before, Inktober falls at a very busy time, not just for me, for a lot of people. But in my case, it's uh, I've got a lot of projects that are not regular 
Um, there's the 12 days of Christmas, which I still haven't figured out if I'm going to do it or not again this year. I'm trying to rebrand. I need to reorganize my studio because it is no longer functional and adds to the stress. And plus, you know, the regular tasks that still need to get done. It also falls at a time where the seasons are changing and there's less daylight time, which affects me a lot. The prospect of winter is not appealing to me. I'm dreading it, so I'm trying not to think about it. But despite all that, I remember the feeling I got when I completed Inktober last year, I remember that sense of accomplishment. And that's what I'm holding on to. I need that feeling desperately. And I know it's probably not smart of me to take part in that challenge, but I can't not do it. I just, I can't quit. I need it. I was not supposed to record any of my pages. I did record day one. I did record day two. And now I just feel compelled to keep on going. So it's a tricky situation. But I'm going after that pat on the back that I'll be able to give myself after I complete the challenge. Uh, it's crucial to me. I, I really, really need that. All right, so now that the Hallmark moment is done and over with, let's talk about the piece itself. So when I look at this drawing, the finished drawing, the first thing that comes to mind is overworked. And it is. And I will explain. I know I'm going to get a bit of a backlash for talking ill about my drawing. And I'm not really talking ill about it. Because... The pieces that I'm not 100% satisfied with have become even more precious to me because they, they provide help. They made me learn something. They, uh, they told me what not to do. I even remember the feeling that I get when I make such a piece. And so I'm not, I'm not bashing my own work. I'm using that uh, as a way to learn. And so I'm liking the piece because of that, not necessarily about what it looks like. When I say overworked, <laughs> it's because I did not know how to draw drool. The prompt for that day is drooling. <laughs> and you see all these little broken bits and pieces. They look like tears. They're kind of like misshapen tears. And the idea that I had in mind, the concept was a weeping rose, or not really a weeping rose, a drooling rose. <laughs> That's my quirky sense of humor. <laughs> um, but I didn't know how to go about it. And so I was making all these broken pieces and at the same time, they, they were empty shapes, outlined, fine lined, the same as the rest of the drawing. And I really wanted the drill to stand out because that's the prompt. And right now, right there, I figured it out how to do it. And I would have made my life so much easier if I had looked up reference online but I'm so hell-bent on not doing that, and I don't know why. Well, I do know why, but that's a whole discussion. <laughs> it's another discussion for later. But I could have saved myself so much time, and I probably would have liked the end result better, because now I had the amazing task of turning all these little broken pieces into drool, but they're all over the place. <laughs> And so, because I wanted them to be the main focus, I thought they need to be filled in. All these empty shapes need to be filled in and be replaced by actual drool. So I decided to 
use a black pen to fill them in, but there were there was so much of it, <laughs> so much of it, that in an effort to minimize that huge black action going on, <laughs> that's a lot of black on a page. It's not even finished the way you're seeing it right now. Um, I decided to bust out my gold ink and go over all these shapes. And in hindsight, I think I would have preferred to have left them black because I'm not sure about the gold. And I do apologize because I did not film applying the gold. There's a little bit of it um, when I added when I used the gold with the dip pen, but because I was trying to cover um, black, which would not be a problem had it only been the black that I uh, did with the Pentel pen, which is permanent, but I was also going over some of the ink that, um, the, some of the Muji ink, which is not permanent, so it was kind of like disturbing the black that was underneath. So it's a bit of a challenge and uh, instead of using the dip pen, I opted to use a paintbrush. But that's the part I did not record. So you see at this point now, I'm just adding the details, uh, the signature and the prompt. And I thought it was finished. And then I looked at it and I was like, no, let's make the tears still unified, but a little bit lighter. And again, I'm not sure if I if it helped. <laughs> you be the judge. You tell me. You let me know if I did the right thing by adding the gold. Um, I'm not going to take offense if you say it's not good because I, I need the input. So please be honest. And that's what it looks like. So now you're going to see me trying to take pictures. <laughs> of the book because I thought I was not recording. I thought that I had recorded the previous segment, which I did not. It's all a question of timing. I'm famous for that. So my apologies for the missing footage, but that is the final look. In the next frame, you'll have a photo to look at. It will give you a better idea. So feel free to let me know what you think about this. I want to say a big thank you to my awesome patrons for supporting my art over at Patreon. You guys are awesome. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you tomorrow.